Hey everybody, welcome back to the Black Hole of Projects where they go in and almost never come out the same. Today we have the special task of taking care of a problem that was started by another project. Can you believe it? Only a few videos into our new channel and already we've started toppling dominoes. So what happened? Well, a few videos ago we did a Sova console USB charger. If you haven't seen that one, check it out. Anyway, that project was caused by the fact that we found something missing in our new couch. And we found something else missing, no place to put stuff. Other than the two cup holders in the console, which is very nice, there's no place to put down a coffee mug or a plate or a book or anything. And also the rounded corner of a sectional really consumes a ton of space in the room that it flat out wastes. So today we're gonna add as a shelf in back of the couch for people sitting there to use for stuff. We're gonna put a shelf in there, but we can't just put any old off the shelf shelf in there on account of the straight edge and the curved couch not making the greatest fit. So I've got plenty of experience making shelves and such from plywood and laminate and what have you, but this one we're gonna do super cheap and guess what, the look will be nearly the same. Today we're gonna to both modify an Ikea tabletop 30 bucks to fit nicely behind the couch and on the wall and we're going to explore the inners of that tabletop and see what makes them so light. They weigh hardly anything. Check it out. So we got to be kind of careful with this cut. So what we're going to do is we've got this corner, right, of this wall. What we want is, we want to have a diagonal shelf that doesn't cut off the corner completely, but we have this couch corner that comes in, there's a radius here, right? So, so we've, got this, um, we've got this shelf, this dis desktop, which is actually pretty large, it's actually, I think it's actually in scale, it's actually about this wide. So what does that mean? If we have something that's this wide, like this, all the way out to here, right? Where do we have to make our cuts? So obviously we have to make a cut that's, this actually meets here. We gotta cut this off here, and we gotta cut it off here. Boy, I really drew this poorly. Right, and that leaves us, and we gotta cut it out for the couch. So that leaves us a shape that's roughly like that, right? That's a pretty weird shape. Now, because you'll see the way the IKEA tabletops are made, it's um it's a honeycomb inside, which means that there's in between the two thin sheets, there's cardboard in here that's standing up. And if you were, that's if you look at it from the side, if you look at it from the top, that cardboard is standing up in, it's probably not uh, hexagonal, it's probably just, um, it's probably just squares, right? It's probably just X's of cardboard that are standing up. If I draw a little bit of a perspective drawing here, you can kind of see that that starts to take shape there, right, for what these cardboard pieces, these cardboard, oops, these cardboard shapes might look like inside, in between these two things. It's actually fairly strong. So what does that mean? That means that this opening is going to be raw. It's going to be open like this. It's not going to have any support. It also means that these ends are not going to have any good support because the IKEA shelf does have, uh, you know, if I was to show you a little bit different um, kind of a map of these things from what I understand is about this much of it is solid inside on the two long ends and that's so that you can screw in legs underneath. So these are going to be solid but all this is going to be hollow with that um, honeycomb cardboard inside and so that means that we may end up with you know a little sliver of this here that's solid and a little sliver of 
this here, that's solid, right? But this will have nothing inside right here, except for that honeycomb. Same thing with, well, this, this will just have an, an edge. The edge is a little bit beefier, but not much. And then this is gonna be completely honeycomb open. And so will all of this, all open honeycomb. So we're gonna have to figure out something, something to, to put inside of here, maybe with some glue and um, maybe we'll, I'm not even sure what we'll do exactly, but we've gotta put something inside of there for strength. We've gotta put something inside of here so we can mount things like angle brackets. If this is the way that meets the wall, we wanna put some sort of angle bracket on the wall. Now we don't have to finish this because it's gonna drop down behind the couch. If we were to look at the side of the couch like this, right? This is the back of a seat, for instance, some terrible drawing. Um, we're gonna put the shelf about here behind that couch, right? So the, this lip, this, we're not even gonna see this lip. And then we're gonna do something about the back here to keep stuff from falling off until we have a little light back there. We wanna keep stuff from falling off the shelf because it's gonna be much harder to get. Um, we can't send the kids back over the shelf because uh, you know they'll, they'll break it. So we're gonna have to figure a lot of stuff out here. So we took some dimensions and we discovered that this corner section has a radius which of the couch section, the radius is from the center, right, to the edge here of 48 inches. Okay, that's going to be 48 inches either way. And so what that means is that we've got to make, we've got to draw a line on our shelf uh, that with a 48 inch radius. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. We're going to put this thing on the ground. We're going to basically just tape, well, not here, but we're going to put this thing on the ground. We're going to line it up according to the drawing that we showed you before. And we're going to put a, you know, we're going to tape a section on the ground here that could be our pivot point. And then we'll take a piece of wood or something like that that's got a, that's at least 40 inches long. And we're going to put a, a, a probably a piece of chalk or something that'll, that'll write in white, or we might put some tape down. And then we're just going to use this as a fulcrum kind of like a compass, and we're gonna draw that radius out like that, and that's how we're gonna do that. No trigonometry at all, huh? No trig required. Hey, we got our good, my good buddy, uh, a good buddy came by, the uh, partner of the channel here came by to help, so I'm really happy to have him here. He's gonna help us out, because we're gonna need two hands here in just a second. I'm gonna put this right on a line of the tile, the actual board itself. And use the floor as a straight edge. Use the floor as a guide. Yeah, correct. So we decided to flip it over so we could just draw what we're going to be cutting onto it. Should make our lives a little easier. That's the way these, these projects go sometimes. Sometimes you just have to try something and be like, uh, let's do it a different way. This is our contraption. You have a one by four or a long ruler, I guess, or some sort of long, non-flexible thing. You can use it, but this is our contraption here that was made for a previous project. We're not really putting a lot of stress on this. If we were gonna connect, you know, like a router to the other end or something, um, where it was actually gonna be pulling it around, That'd be one thing, but this is really just to just to give us the tiniest little bit of resistance, just a little bit, so that um, it'll help us to draw that semi circle. So that's it, huh? All that waste? We'll have to find another use for this somewhere else, for sure. Nah, we'll just throw it out afterwards. <laughs> yeah, that's what the plan is. 
That is a $30 bikini shelf. We're getting ready to do the first cut. We're going to cut a straight line, even though that's not, we're gonna be able to make, it's gonna be easier to handle, I guess, by cutting a straight line. So we're just preparing to do that here. Plus our, our waste product, which everything you see outside of that radius is all considered waste as far as this project is concerned. So we wanna take a nice straight cut across here so we can use this as a real shelf. It's got three sides on it that are good. It's got some structural stuff inside that's really solid. So we're gonna take advantage of that. Here we go. Make it work. No battery. That, don't make it work yet. No chooch. No chooch. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Power. Now, any of you uh, don't complain too much about my uh, my straight line cutting. This was again, this is basically a throwaway part. I should have clamped down a straight edge and pressed against it, but I just didn't care that much, and I didn't have a five foot straight uh, straight edge that would fit well in here. I have an eight foot, but we're a little tight for space here. Look at that. Look at that cardboard inside. It's a good idea if you can if you can do it. You want to cut, take your blade, which on a circular saw was cutting like this. So it was cutting on the forward stroke in the upward position. That's why we cut from the bottom. We had it upside down because we wanted the, the blade to go cutting into, and you do you put the tape on there. And in a lot of cases, you can see there very little chipping. Whereas if the blade was popping up the other way, even if we had tape, there'd be a lot of chipping. Now this isn't a super clean edge, but probably if we put one of our little fancy sanding sponges along it, it'd probably clean up just nice. And this is a perfectly good shelf for another purpose. We'll put that aside for later. That's what I was talking about earlier. That is honeycomb. That is some value engineering. This is the type of thing where the guard gets hung up because you're pushing on something angled. Mm -hmm. You'll try to, you know, pull the guard in weird ways. So if you're, I try to be, you know, you gotta be super careful, but. These little drop pieces are not that bad. This can go, these could be neat little shelves. Actually, if you put them, put, put them like this, corner. like this on a wall, well, you can't really put them in a corner, right? Because oh, because of the bad sides on the, the bad side. Way. Yeah, the bad side. But uh, you could put them like this on the wall, like stagger them like this, and have some kind of interesting looking dealio. Anyway, Another we don't throw anything out around here. We're like orders. Another day. This is our, our our seven ounce shelf. I mean, let's see how light is it. It doesn't weigh anything. <laughs> this is it. You can see how much corrugation there is in there. How much of that honeycomb IKEA relies on for strength. As you can see, you'll be able to see here a little bit of those chips I was telling you about. That's what happens when we didn't tape the edge. It's a little wobbly too. We we're on the bottom of a wobbly blade. But it's not too bad, it's not too bad. And this is gonna be the side that's gonna be pressed up against the couch. The back of the couch, you'll never see it. I'm not even sure that we'll do anything about this corrugated um, front all there. We might put some support in there. We'll just have to see. 
I used a caliper to measure the inside dimension of the shelf and used that to measure some scrap wood that I had laying around to find out how much I needed to take off on the milling machine. I set the stock on the milling machine and dropped the cutter down until it just made contact with the surface. Then I zeroed out the digital readout, DRO, and started taking away a little bit of wood at a time. Once I got down to the dimension I needed, I was done with the milling machine. You can use a table saw for this too, and it's probably a much better tool for the job. Then I cut the pieces to the length I needed, and I did shoot the segment where I installed these wood pieces into the shelf, but it got corrupted in some way and I was unable to recover it. All I did was use a knife to cut away some of the cardboard, put a lot of glue on it, and tap the pieces into place and let them dry overnight. Here I'm just getting ready to mount the shelf to the wall, and I'm uh, just marking some positions to make sure that it's the same distance from the corner that it's the right height and that it's level. Um, this is a little bit harder when you don't have something touching the corner, it turns out. So I needed to put up some uh, blocks there to support the shelf while I attached it. I decided since there wasn't ever going to be a lot of weight on the shelf to go ahead and use something called a wall dog. It's a pretty nice screw, uh, specifically for screwing in the drywall without the need of an anchor. As long as you're careful uh, and you put it in so it doesn't strip, it will hold really, really well. I decided to start on one side and get one of the brackets mounted and then slowly move myself around the shelf, leveling as I went double check that it was level, make sure everything was good, and put the last of the screws in. Then I needed a measure for, I guess you'd kind of call it a backsplash, uh, and that was actually pretty hard to measure. I uh, was measuring into two 45 degree corners. I started out with a pretty big piece of this dark brown baseboard that matched the color of the shelf, and I started cutting and realized that I had there was some damage on the board, so I decided to cut the damage off and start over. And I wanted to be really careful, so I started by cutting it a little bit large, and then I trimmed it a few times to get it perfect. And then I drilled a couple of holes that I could put screws through and secure it to the back of the shelf. All right, there it is. As you can see, it came out pretty much the way we wanted it to. The little backboard on the back to try to keep stuff from falling over into that hole. It'd be pretty difficult to get something out of there once it did, but it's not impossible. These sectional pieces, they all interlock together, so uh, it's a little difficult to get them out. But uh, anyway, we're okay with that. I did end up putting some duct tape along the front edge because it occurred to me, since I wasn't finishing that edge, that if somebody spilled something and it dripped over the front end of that, it could get in there and make that cardboard and that particle board swell, which wouldn't be that good. So I did put some tape on that front lip. You can't really see it but it's there just in case. It should help a little bit if there's moisture that um, come, you know, gets close to that edge or whatever. But uh, this was an experiment. I think it turned out really well. I think if I was going to do it again, I probably would go ahead and finish that edge uh, with some wiggle board or just some solid chunks of wood and then sand them down um, so that they were uh, able to be finished uh, so it looked nicer when it was exposed. But you can see the way it is now, it's actually recessed behind this sectional corner. And so you can't really see that front edge anyway, which is all part of the design. 
So anyway, I hope you like it, and if you do, please subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos and you want to see more of them, take a look over at us on Patreon. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month, and it just helps us to buy supplies and, and keep our tools intact, and just helps make it possible for us to continue making these videos. Thanks a lot. We really hope you're enjoying it. Make her work.